I want to show two quick highlights from today. We open up strong. You're not going to see it on this screen, but what we had coming in here was an iceberg seller was the same guy. Another chart we have when he uh, lowers his offer there, he lowers it there, doesn't get filled, doesn't get filled. Finally, he lowered it to around here, and they chiseled away. And as soon as he's done, the market's done, meaning generally – he starts from up here, and they push it down, push it down, push it down. As soon as they fill them, it was over 1,000 contracts. It's a relief valve. That's how you trade order flow. There was another circle of skill, though. One was order flow, seeing the iceberg come down. When he was done, we were able to pop. Another one was the bond prices, and the yen went down. Both of those generally move strength into um in the stocks right and so then there was something else that i i'm not able to show it to you and, and it was uh there were less longs in the market with something else we look we look at so we had three circles where the overlap was phenomenal it was just a reactionary trade to be able to call this when you see an iceberg walk down now the other thing that happened just moments ago and this is what's important about understanding what's driving the market Right in here, geez, I even got to bring it back. Right in here going into 1030, we're getting some headlines that the president's going to um, declare a state of emergency. And the market kind of goes down but then goes up because it likes the fact that maybe there's some resources he has. The, the other thing was the G7 are going to have a video conference on Monday to coordinate an effort. So these are a couple bullish things. And Congress is supposed to. Bill on his Facebook page saying he's tested negative for coronavirus. No, he's tested negative for coronavirus, the Brazilian leader. So that's a little bullish. And he's a little bullish because he was with Pence and Trump at some point. But anyhow, you, you, you rally in here. And I'm telling guys, listen, if you can't hold on to this rally, and it was around 30, 32, with bullish stuff out there, it's look out below. It, if it can't hold on to a rally, you're only given so much time because you got some bullish drivers that were dumping down the wires. The G7 meeting doing a coordinated, something coordinated, press conference at 2 o'clock, maybe to announce some congressional fiscal stimulus, and it sounds like they agreed on something. And you can't rally, you can't rally, and you should. Once you get through that moment where you probably got the longs who are waiting for the rally – to say uncle, which is generally through the middle of some box or some swing lows, boom. When they go, they went. And we talked about it when the price was up here and here and here, telling guys to be careful, 30, 32, the bottom's going to fall out. When you're supposed to rally and you don't, it's probably bearish. Remember that. When you're supposed to rally, this is way up here. This is way up here, 30, 32. It broke. 40, 50 handles, this S&P. Comes right back to some resistance that we had when the Brazilian guy was not uh, tested positive, now negative. But the point is, this is a big break that shouldn't be a good guess because it happened. Could have kept you off the wrong side. Could have got you on the right side. How do you know when a market should rally? You're anticipating what drivers are doing, and the drivers are coming in and trying to sprinkle some strength into this market, and when you give it time to do it, time to do it, time to do it, time to do it, and it can't, it's just like that. Remember that throughout this whole process. This is unprecedented to have a pandemic. I've traded electronically for 20 years, and there's been the Zika and the Ebola and the Mars and the SARS, and, the, and this has been different. It's been different the, with the fiscal and central bank stimulus that they're throwing at it, the lockdowns of certain countries, the cancellation of sporting events. Um, Ebola had huge downside ramifications certain days because it had a high death rate, but nothing like this. This is almost like, hey, a lot of people are going to get this. And so is there more concern than, than, the, um, than the actual event? Probably, but there should be concern. And that's the problem. And the market, remember, has to trade 
uncertainty until there's certainty, and they hate uncertainty. And the market also has to assess what the damage is going to be after the clouds clear. Well, the clouds are still over us. They don't want to have happen in the United States what had to happen in Italy where they have a total lockdown. We're getting close to that. So they, they uh, need to get out of the woods. They need to see Italy turn the corner and, um, and then to see finally get these test kits out to have an accurate number of people who have it here in the U.S. and then see us kind of stunt instead of having a peak and really stress out healthcare. But the markets right now have to wait for the clouds to clear to see that kind of damage was left from the hurricane, so to speak. And all this stimulus is great, and it's obviously better than nothing, and it probably will help, but they don't know how bad bad is and how long people are going to maybe be stuck inside. So stay safe, be responsible, and you'll be fine. And always manage your risk before you take it. And there's no coincidence this resistance works because it's order flow resistance. Guys who've traded with me a long time know your best support resistance is made up from order flow support resistance. So a lot of stuff I just covered now. Hope you guys have a safe weekend. Trump speaks, press conference, 2 Central. You should be there.